Praise the Lord. Activate church. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? God, the we, pray, we, we thank God that we have a guest this morning, Mr. Gavino Galindo. We're glad you're with us. Amen. How many are ready to have church? Amen. 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 How was your week? Good. 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 Yeah, one in ten. Man. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Find some water. I'm gonna find myself like I used to back in the day, putting the sprinkler on and running through it. <laughs> yeah. Or, or making a homemade uh, slip and slide with the trash bags. And then just get grass like that. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Luke chapter three. Luke chapter three, if you. If you don't mind standing for the reading of the word. <laughs> Last week, we spoke about renewing your mind. How many took a conscious effort to try to get your mind renewed, restored, to be thinking like God thinks? Amen? Not all of We're still working on it. That's okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Atheria, the region of Tagontritis, and Licinius, the tetrarch of Abilene, and Annas and Sophias of uh, uh, Caiaphas, being high priest, the word of God came to John. Say the word of God came to John. The, word of God came to John. the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And it came, and he came to into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. And as it was written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain, every hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight. The rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Go to verse 10. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? And he answered, said unto them, And he that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none, and he that hath meat, let him do likewise. And then came the publicans to, to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, Say the people are in expectation. And all men used in their hearts of God, whether he were the Christ or not. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, prepare our hearts. I know that you have a word for us. Let your spirit flow through this house as a river of living water and out of our bellies. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, Lord God. Let us have hearts to receive your word. Write your word upon the table of our heart. We thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do. We come in expectation in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. So this morning, I'm going to keep on. I believe the Lord wants us to keep on dealing with the battlefield of the mind. Last week, we spoke about renewing your mind. And we're going to, the Lord has us in that vein of 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 protecting and, and showing you the battlefield that goes on between your ears. And how many know sometimes that's a tough battle just to deal with your thoughts and just to deal with temptation and just to deal with different things that are going on in your life. Sometimes that battlefield is the worst battlefield. No matter what you're facing in front of you, sometimes your mind will make it greater than it is. Amen. And I wanted to, I read this scripture in Luke chapter 3 and begin with all that showing that, that all of a sudden the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist. What, what I didn't tell you is it had been 400 years and the people 
had not heard a word from God. He had been silent for 400 years. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine praying and seeking God's face and coming to church day in and day out because they still tried to find him and not hearing from God? There was a time period that, that um, I felt like I couldn't hear God years and years and years ago. And this one sister blessed me with a book uh, that was called In Search of a Silent God. And, and, and to go without, without going in deep, I felt like the Lord got silent so that I could lean in closer to hear. And I did. And, and, and when he spoke, I heard him clearly. Even when he whispered, I heard him clearly. But I want to remind you, it's been 400 years since Malachi, the, the last book of the Old Testament, to Luke chapter 3. 400 years. And then all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes to John. And, and John begins to, 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 to speak in the wilderness and that prophecy in Isaiah starts coming to pass and where he says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And, and everybody in Israel knew about this prophecy. So if this prophecy is coming to pass, that only means one thing. That means God is coming. The Messiah is coming. If this is coming to pass, it says, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight because he is, everyone will see the salvation of God. And so I want you to think about that for a second. Put yourself in their shoes. It's been 400 years of silence and all of a sudden the word of the Lord comes to John in the wilderness and he starts to quote Isaiah. So all that silence, nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're shocked with news that he's coming. With news that, that the one that, that's supposed to come and make, make a way and pave the way, the one that comes right before him is here and he's in the wilderness. And he's speaking and he's crying now. And all of a sudden, can you see the excitement of the people? The people heard John the Baptist in the wilderness and they knew that prophecy of the one crying in the wilderness before the coming of the Lord. And the Bible says that they, they believed it. It says in verse 15, it says, and the people were in expectation. In expectation. They believed that the Lord was about to come. They believed that the one crying in the wilderness was the one that, that was foretold of in prophecy. They believed it and they were in expectation. We all know the Lord's coming back, right? Who's ready for the rapture? Yeah, one, we got one ready for the rapture. Everybody else is not sure. You sure you had a good week? Praise the Lord. But the Lord's about to come and the people, the Bible says, and the people were in expectation. Today's message is there is power in expectation. There is power in expectation. I got a question for you, church, this morning. And I need you to engage with me. I need you to engage your heart, engage your mind, because, because this word is of the Lord. And I believe that if you'll hear it and you'll engage yourself right this morning, it'll, it'll make a, a shift in, in your spirit. To make a shift in your life, in every area of your life. My question to you this morning is, what is your expectation this morning? When you came to church this morning, what were you expecting? Did you just barely make it out of bed and like, I'm not expecting, I'm not just expecting to make it, you know? What, what were you expecting when you got to church this morning? Were you expecting to hear? I want, I want you to think about that for a second. Were you expecting to hear a word from God? Were you expecting to hear a move or, or, or see or feel a move of God? A manifestation of His power? Were you expecting maybe a miracle from God? See, and sometimes we don't expect anything till we need it and then we're begging for it. But on a daily basis, on a day, on, on every day, do you wake up expecting to hear from God? Do you wake up expecting to see something that God wants to show you? Are you expecting this morning to truly hear from God? Or did, did you come as of routine? Did you come as of, well, this is just what we do on Sunday. We go to church. Amen. See, because expectation matters, church. Expectation matters. What is your everyday expectation? 
See, did you come expecting or does your expectation even include God? Here's what I mean by that question. Um, are you expecting trouble in your life to continue? See, when you expect trouble in your life to continue, you don't even include God in that expectation. Does it make sense? Yeah. Anybody ever said, when it rains, it pours? Yeah. Right? Do not raise your hand. Everybody. I think almost everybody has done that. When it rains, it pours. And that wasn't a good thing, right? You're not standing outside going, oh, it's raining and pouring. You know, I love it. So that's not what we're talking about. When you're like, it, when it rains, it pours, you're talking about something negative. And when it rains, it's going to continue to pour. It's going to continue to get bad. And that's what you're expecting. So you speak it out, right? Or, or maybe you say something to the same effect. This is just my life. This is my portion. This is just what I have to endure. This is this is what I get. And it's said, any takers on that one? Yeah. See, where is God in your expectation this morning? And the reason why we're, that I believe the Lord wanted, and you see that God looking, He's He's expecting, He's searching, because because I believe that the church is lost their expectation of what God can do in their life on a daily basis. Right. Not just when you need a miracle. Not just when you're, when, when you, oh, I need that bill paid or I need this, that, or, or I'm praying for that brother or that sister. Not, but every single day are you coming with expectation to hear from God. Because every single day, church, He wants to speak to you. Every single day, He wants to, to touch you and to fill you. Every single day, He wants to do something in your life, but Sometimes he's just waiting because the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And the reason why you don't ask for nothing because you don't expect. Right? If you expected any time you came up to me, I would open my wallet and go, what do you mean? What do you, mean? you know, how many, how, you know, make it rain. And if you expected that, how many times would you come? Like every day, like, can you make it rain today? Right? But but we we, we, we treat God like like, well, I don't really expect much from you because you're God. Mm. See? See, he's our father. Yes. Amen. He's, he's, he's one that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Religion will have you, have you have God way over there and so holy you can't touch him and you can't approach him. But God died for you. Amen. God died for me. So that he could be so close that you can have communication. He ripped the veil in the temple so that you can have access to the Holy of Holies. And if you come with that expectation in your heart, that's the kind of expectation that the Lord, the Lord is drawing you to this morning. This kind of expectation to seek his face when you pray. Do you pray with expectation to hear from him? Or do you just put out a laundry list? I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. Help me with this, 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 this. I got everything. Okay, thank God. Can you take care of that? All right, that helps. Man. Man. What is God doing? Are you, when you approach God in prayer, are you expecting something? Are you expecting to hear from him? Are you expecting even an answer to your prayer? Or are you just... Like the Bible says, don't don't give a re repetitive prayer and repeat it so much because they think that with much saying they're going to be heard much. I'm paraphrasing. How about worship? When we worship God, are, are, do you expect that the Lord is hearing you, or is it just um, this is just what we do, right? It's like going to lunch after church, going to eat at sister's house after church, you know. This is just what we do. This is just what we do. And praise is part of that sometimes in church. We're, you know, when you get home, what, what, what do you do? You get home every day and kick off your shoes or, you know, especially these, uh, the, the wives are like, oh, I can't stand it. Put your shoes away, you know. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I had a vision of my house right now. Just kidding. <laughs> right, you get real comfortable. And every day it's the same thing. You don't need to. It's not just something that you're, that's just routine. And sometimes Sunday becomes like that without any expectation. Any expectation of a word, any expectation of a miracle, any expectation to actually hear from God. But expectation matters, church. Activate, church. There is power in expectation. 
Let me show you how that works. Let's go to Hebrews chapter six. And I got a lot of scripture this morning, but that's good because uh, I got a feeling somebody neglected their Bible this week. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Hebrews chapter 11. Somebody took our Bibles. You don't have your Bible? You came to war without your sword. I'm going to read it for you, all right? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. See, expectation is connected to faith. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then, and then th this is the faith chapter, the heroes of faith. It goes into, by faith, Noah being warned of God, he received a word from God. And by faith, being warned of God, of things not yet seen, he moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and, and became an heir of righteousness by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of a place that he should go after he received an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. And by faith he sojourned in a land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob and, and the heirs of him of the same promise. For he looked for a city. He Say he looked. He expected. He looked for a city which hath foundations who builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah received herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, sprang up even of one. I want you to, I, I, I read this, this verse, but it just popped out to me this morning. Therefore sprang there even, even of one and him as good as dead. Okay, watch this. Therefore sprang there even of one and, of, and him as good as dead. Basically saying Abraham was as good as a dead man. He was that old. And out of that one almost dead man came a multitude. Said so many as the stars of the sky in multitude as the sand which was by the seashore innumerable. That's how big the promise came from one man that was almost dead according to scripture. He was that. That's what expectation was. See, your situation can be almost dead, church. It can be completely lifeless. It can completely be beyond your years. Who, who would? In, I mean, I don't know why you would want one, but but and then you're ninety years old, hundred years old, and all of a sudden, there's it's impossible to conceive. But God did something in a man. He restored Sarah and he did something in Abraham where the impossible became possible. Amen. 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 See, first God gives a word. Let, let, let me tell you, let me break it down for you. First God gives a word. How many have, a, have his word? Amen. Amen. Number two, you must believe that word. So if he gives you a word, you've got to believe that word. Amen. And then number three, you have to engage your faith and act on that word diligently seeking. Come on. Let me go back. So without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you diligently seek him through faith and engage, engage your faith and act on the word by diligently seeking him. Then through faith, you expect a result. See, that's there's a lot of people out there today that will pray without expecting an answer. They're just saying words. They, 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 they will pray and ask God for an answer and not wait to hear what the answer is. Because they never expected him to talk in the beginning, in the first place. 
There's no expectation. In, in, in so many people's walk in God, there is no expectation to hear from God. So when you pray and you ask God for an answer, you don't stop and wait on it because you never expected him to speak to you in the first place. Some of that is, 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 is through self-worth. Some of that is through religion. And some of that is just through, through routine and going through the motions. Amen. So first, you, you, God gives you a word, and then you must believe it, and then you've got to enga engage your faith and act on that word, diligently seeking him, and then through faith, expect the result, expect the reward, expect the promise, expect the miracle. Amen. Amen. You know, my, my family uh, was, was sick these last couple of weeks, and I heard the word of the Lord, and they got sick, like... Stay over there, sick. <laughs> you know, I was there. <laughs> Stay over there, sick. But the Lord spoke to me and he says, you won't get sick. And I was like, okay. So my wife was like, hey, I'm sick. I'm like, I'm not gonna get, I don't want to get you sick. I'm not going to get sick. And then, and then a couple of days ago, all of a sudden I felt something trying to get a hold of my body. And I told my wife, I said, I felt the Lord tell me that I wasn't going to get sick. And I don't feel right right now. And she said, well, if the Lord told you. And I was like, right. Right. so I said, I'm not sick. I'm, and I shook that stuff. I'm not getting yeah. sick. I'm not getting yeah. sick. I went to bed and woke up and I was like, Woo, brand new, shiny, yeah. brand spent. God restored and renewed. He, he said, all you had to do was expect me to complete what I already told you I was going to do. Yeah. But, but how do you know that battlefield in the mind? How many know that sometimes when, when you, I know what God says, I know what he said, and I know that word came to me, but all of a sudden the enemy says, you don't feel good, do you? You feel kind of weak, don't, don't your bones hurt? Don't, 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 uh, don't you feel that in your throat? You're all, you know, it's just all in your head. Come on. The enemy will start messing with you. God's like, just stand upon what I told you. And sure enough, I stood upon it and like that. I was I was back to where I was. I, I, I don't I don't know why I sh I gotta be transparent. Sometimes I I deal with doubt. Sometimes did I really hear him? You know? Anybody deal with that? No? Amen. Just me. <clears throat> Your expectation has a result. Your belief has a result, good or bad. Let me say that again. Your expectation has a result. Your belief will have a result, good or bad. Let me prove it through you to the Word of God. Go to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Gospel of Mark chapter 6. We're going to begin with verse, with verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 5. Give you a minute to get there. Now Jesus goes to Nazareth, where he's from, and he begins to preach. And he went out from, from thence and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach the, in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, For whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is, it, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and of Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. Verse five. And he could, he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around the, about the villages teaching. 
So I want to stop there. And the reason I want to point out that in verse 1, he was in his own country. He was around his own people where he was from. Amen. And, and verse 2 says, and, and as he began to preach and to teach, they heard him and were astonished. They were shocked. And usually you get shocked and you, you, were, you get astonished because you weren't expecting that to come from that person. They got shocked because their expectation was a whole lot lower about Jesus than what he was. See, their expectation was low. They had very little, if any, of Jesus. And, and, and let me prove it to you because it says that, that he was teaching and he had wisdom. They, they, they were astonished at his teaching. And they were astonished of how much wisdom he had. And they even saw his works. They said, it says that what wisdom is, is this which is given unto him. And even such mighty works that he wrought in his, by his own hands. They saw all this and heard all this and they were astonished. But, but here, here's their reasoning. They said, isn't this a carpenter? How is he so wise? He's just a carpenter. Amen. And, I don't, and, and, and they were confused and they were astonished because they said, isn't this the son of Mary? You know, that carpenter. The, 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 the brother of James and the brother of, of Joseph and the brother of Judah and the brother of Simon and there's his sisters right isn't that that guy isn't this this man and they were shocked and astonished because they knew Jesus only by the natural I don't think he caught they only knew Jesus by the natural they were offended at him because because he was more than they expected Some people will be offended at you because you become more than they expect. There are some people that have spoken curses over your life. You'll never be this. You'll never be that. You can't ever become this. You'll never be a preacher. You'll never do this and you're not that. You're unqualified. Things of that. All these things that, that, they, that they spew. All this poison. Why? Because they, they get offended. And then when they see you do those things, they get even offended all the more. Right? Let them get offended. And here's why. Because, because like these people, they, look, they looked at Jesus and only saw the, the natural. They neglected the supernatural. They only saw Jesus the carpenter. They didn't see Jesus the Messiah. They didn't see Jesus the Christ. They didn't see Jesus, Son of God. They didn't see Him in that way, they only looked at the natural. And there's so many people in the church today that when they see you, they only see you in the natural. They limit you because of what they see and how you look and how you dress and, and that you're, you're not like they are. And that you don't speak how they speak. And they limit you because of the natural. The Bible says that they were offended at Jesus. They knew him only in the natural. I got a question, another question for you this morning, church. How do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you really know him in the supernatural? Because naturally you've read the Bible. Naturally you've heard the stories. Naturally you've, you, everybody has heard about Jesus. Even unbelievers know naturally that, that, that Jesus existed. But do you, how do you know him? Do you just know about him? Do you just know that he's mentioned in the Bible? Did you just know that he came to save you, but you do you know him in the supernatural? Amen. How do you know Jesus? Here's the thing, church. How you know Jesus is often shown by what you expect from him. Let me say that again. How you know Jesus is often expect, shown or proved by what you expect from him. Amen. Amen. They expected nothing. Even after, I want you to see this, even after hearing him, even after seeing the miracles, even after hearing the wisdom, they still expected nothing. What is your expectation this morning? See, here's the thing, church. The God wants to do mighty things for you. Are you eager with anticipation? Have you ever been so eager with anticipation that... 
that you can, it's like un, uncontainable. Have you ever been there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you were expecting to get a nice check or a gift or you go going shopping. I don't know. An Amazon box coming. I don't know. But you came with such, you were anticipating it so much and you kept checking. You know, those Amazon boxes, you keep checking the people. <laughs> Not here yet. Not here yet. Have you ever been with eager with anticipation? Church, do you approach God that way? With eager anticipation, with expectation, looking like this man is looking right here, even looking to afar, oh Lord, I know you're coming. I know you're coming. See, they saw John in the wilderness and they knew he was coming. And it says, the Bible says, the people were the end with expectation, even thought for a minute that possibly John the Baptist could be him, the Messiah, but he wasn't. He said that one comes more after me mightier than I. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your expectation has a result. Let me read that again. Proverbs 23, 7, for those of you who have taken notes, says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen? Yeah. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Activate church. God wants to do mighty things through you and through me. See, naturally, church, naturally, I can only do about so much, so much for you. But supernaturally, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen. Naturally, if you're demonized, sorry for you. Man, that's that's tough. I hope I hope I hope I hope something happens. Naturally, if you've got a demon, there's nothing. But supernaturally. Come on, church. Supernaturally, in the name of Jesus, Amen. they will cast out devils. Yes. In, in the name of Jesus. Yes. See, see, naturally, if you're sick, I gotta say, man, go see a doctor. I, I don't know. I, I hope you get better. In the natural. But in the supernatural, the Bible says that I'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Come on, church. The Bible says that issues and all these problems in the natural I can't do much about it see in the natural Jesus could have taken two fish and, and, and five loaves and, and, and only fed just a handful of people but supernaturally he fed over 5,000 and, and this is this is the expectation that God is calling us to in this time, right now, such a time as this for this type of expectation so that revival when it happens you're not shocked you're not astonished because you've been expecting it. You've been expecting God to show up. When you come at church, you ain't shocked when God's power moves and people just start to get slain in the Holy Ghost and, 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 and arms get extended and people begin to walk and people begin to get healed and demons get cast out. Why are you? You're not shocked because you came expecting that to happen. What kind of expectation do you have this morning, church? There was power and expectation. There was power in the supernatural. But what kind of, do you have natural expectation or supernatural expectation? See, some won't even try to do what he said. Why? Because expectation that nothing will happen. Some people won't pray for the sick because what if nothing happens? So they already begin with an expectation that nothing might happen. What if what, what if what if nothing happens? What if I pray and I look dumb? What if I what if I what if I preach and nobody responds? What if I start a church and nobody shows up? What if, and, and, and all of a sudden your expectation conquers the word of God that He told you to go and do and go to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and you haven't gone to anybody, much less your neighbor. Why? Because your expectation of who me, uh, who am I? I can't do anything. That's your expectation. See, your expectation also can create that result. Church, we need to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that says, he's able. 
See, I'll pray and he's able to heal you. And the result is up to God. I'm going to expect you to be healed. I'm going to expect you to start walking. I'm going to expect you to, to, to get delivered from any demon. I'm going to expect that. And I'm going to wait on that and look and see. And I'm going to be like that looking for the miracle. Why? Because I expect it. I believe it. Do you believe it this morning? Do you expect it this morning? He's able to heal. Shout out to Meshach and Abednego where the fiery furnace and he said that he's able to deliver us but even if he does it we will not bow. Amen. And, the, and, and, and that's, that's the spirit we need to come in. He's able to heal you and I'm going to pray and even if he doesn't I'm going to pray and expect God if he don't do it right now he's going to do it five minutes from now and I'm going to kill her. I'm going to expect a miracle. I'm going to expect a miracle. He's able. I'm going to expect it because he said it. And God is not a liar. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew chapter Jesus. 8. Let me give you another example of expectation. Matthew chapter 8. He said it, church. He said it. He gave a word. And that's why we should believe it. Verse 5. Matthew 8, verse 5 says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak. A word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority and having a soldier under me. And if I say unto a man, go, he'll go. And, and to another, come, he'll come. And to my servant, do, it, do this and he'll do it. And Jesus heard it and marveled. Say he marveled. Jesus marveled. And said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found such great faith. No, not in Israel. So I want to point, to, point out some things in this, this portion of scripture here. In verse, in verse 7, Jesus actually tells the centurion, I'll come and heal. He asks, come heal, heal my servant. In other, in other uh, translations, in other gospels, it says, my son. It says, come, come, come heal my servant. And Jesus said, I'll come. How many want Jesus to come to their house? Right? Amen. But this centurion, I want you to want you to see his expectation. He says, you know what? I, I'm not really worthy for you to come, but you don't even need to come. I expect your healing is so strong. Your anointing is so strong. Your authority is so strong. It's all you've got to do is say it. Yeah. If you'll just say it, if you'll just say he's healed, I know he'll be healed. Yeah. That was his expectation, church. See, before this time, before... The, the miracles that had done, Jesus had laid hands on everybody and they were healed. This man drew something else out of Jesus. Jesus went from laying on of hands to just speaking it and it happened. I, I want you all to see that. That, that he, 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 he told him, he says, I'm a man under authority and I know how authority works. So I know that because you have the authority and who can do the works that you do unless you have authority. So if you have that kind of authority, all you got to do is say it. And I expect he'll be healed. I'll, I'll go away. I'll leave you alone. And I know that when I get home, he'll be healed because you said it. Amen. Speak only a word and it will be done. I know power and authority. And if you say it, it's going to be done. And verse 10 just really, really blessed me. And it said, and Jesus heard it and he marveled. Church, do you have the kind of faith that makes Jesus marvel? Do you have the kind of expectation that makes Jesus marvel? God is calling us to the marvelous, marvelous faith, marvelous belief, marvelous expectation, a place where they, that you can even almost even shock Jesus. Jesus marveled at such faith. He said, all of Israel don't have this kind of faith. Amen. And God's calling us to marvelous faith. 
Marvelous expectation. Marvelous belief. Every single, not, not just for the miracle, the big, 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 big one, that big giant or that big mountain, but every single day, marvelous faith. Every single day, marvelous belief. Every single day, a marvelous expectation that you expect God for the best for everything that you ask for. And you're waiting, looking, seeking with anticipation of the arrival of an answered prayer, of an answered promise, of an answered miracle, of whatever that you need, that kind of expectation and what God is, I believe is God is calling us to some, some type of supernatural expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And I want to prove to you that, 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 that it matters. That it matters, your expectation matters, because in verse 13, read it, and it says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, it will be done unto thee. The way you believed it, the way you expected it to happen, that's exactly what's going to happen. Because you believe this way, because you expected it, because you had the faith to ask for it, and he didn't even have to, I don't even, see, some people need, like, you want healing? Yeah, that scripture says, call upon the elders of the church and anointing them with oil. That's, that's Bible. That's a certain type of faith. But there's also a faith that goes beyond that and be like, I, I can't, I, 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 I'm not. I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred miles away. I'm, I'm five hundred miles away. Just, just, just. I know that if you'll just say it. I, I know that if you'll just declare it. I know that if you, if you'll just cast that devil out over the phone or over Zoom or or over the face to face. I, I know that it will be done. That that kind of faith. There's that's a different kind of realm of faith. That's stepping into the supernatural beyond limitations. And that's what God's calling us to do. That kind of marvelous faith. Church. Verse 13, he said, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto you. Yes, Lord. You believe beyond what you've seen. Everybody saw Jesus lay hands and they recovered. It doesn't say that anybody saw Jesus just say, Hey, you know what? The guy over there, you know what? In the house, I know you came from miles, but he'll, he's going to be healed when you get home. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. There's power and expectation. If he said it, he's going to do it. Amen? Amen. See, church, Peter expected to walk on water. He expected it. I want you to see that. He said, Jesus, if it's really you, call me on the water. Please call me on the water. Call me on the water and I'll come to you. Right? Look, I'm not Jesus. If I called you on the water, hey, come to me. You're like, you're crazy. Right? But Peter expected to walk on water. He saw Jesus walking on water and he says, I, I expect that I could do the same thing if you'll, if you'll just say, come to me. If I could just get a word, I could stand upon that word and walk to you on the water. Amen. But where did Peter learn that from? Where, where, did, where did Peter learn that if he just obeyed the word of God, it would, it would tap into the supernatural? See, when Peter and Jesus first met, Jesus walks up to him and, and, and asks him to use his boat and preaches. And then, and then he says, hey, by the way, Peter, cast on that side of the boat. Just launch out a little bit and cast on that side of the boat. And he said, but, but Lord, we, we toiled all night. But then he says, but at thy word. And he throws the net at thy word. And when he threw that net at thy word and they needed help from everybody else to get all the fish in, Peter never forgot that. Never forgot it. Anyway, church, marvelous faith. A word from God. A word that says you're not going to get sick. And it jumped from my son to my wife. And, you know, like everything else, you're just waiting, sitting there waiting. All right, when's my turn? And the Lord said, you're going to get sick. I was like, okay, thank you. I hate being sick. <laughs> right? I got too much stuff to do. 
But he, he wanted to show me something. You're not going to get sick. And sometimes all you need is a word, church. So I want to encourage you that when you pray, see, you're going to get a miracle when you expect a miracle. When you pray and you ask God for a word, you'll get a word. And sometimes he'll give you a word to sustain you through a valley. He'll sustain you through a broken time. He'll sustain you through a trial. He'll sustain you through a problem. And you'll need that word to sustain. But, but if you don't come expecting a word, you won't stay to hear the word when you pray. And God's calling us to walk into a power of expectation in prayer, in worship. There's power in expectation. Church, this morning, you've got to activate your miracle through expectation. The centurion activated his miracle through expectation. He activated a quicker response. It would have took time for Jesus to walk to the house of the centurion. Who knows if the kid would have lasted that long. Not that Jesus couldn't have raised him from the dead. But the centurion said, you don't have to walk over there. It's going to take us too much time. Just go ahead and just say it. I know he's going to be healed way over there. You got to activate your miracle through expectation. Activate your new level of faith. Activate your anointing. Activate your gift through expectation. <coughs> let me let me give you just a quick testimony. I'm coming to a close. A long time ago, when I was first getting involved in deliverance, um, it was just face to face that I was experiencing laying hands on people, casting out devils through one on one. And then I got a call from somebody who says, listen, I can't come to you. I don't have the time or fixing to leave out of town. And I just, I just, I'm dealing with this, this, and this, and this. And I was like, well, we can set an appointment when you get back from Thanksgiving, you know. And, but the Lord said, no, 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 pray for her now over the phone. And I was like, all right, the Lord told me to pray for you over the phone, so let me just let me just start. And I begin to, to, to bind spirits, and all of a sudden, on the end of, end of that sweet lady, it was on the phone, I started hearing growling and all kinds of stuff, and I was like, and my expectation was increased because God gave me a word. My gift found another level. My anointing found another level. My, 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 my capacity to do something found another level because I trusted in a word from God and I just obeyed and I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, come out. And all of a sudden, after about 20, 30 minutes on the phone, that, that lady says, I feel, I feel so much lighter. I feel brand new. I've never felt like this. And God delivered her over a phone. God did it. God did it. But church, every time God speaks from this pulpit, every God, God, time God speaks right. to you in prayer, every time God speaks to you when you're reading his word, take that word and hold on to it with expectation of a miracle, with expectation of the promise. See, but the word, let me give you one and I'm coming to a close. The Bible says that you'll be the head and not the tail. Amen. How many expect that? Truly expect that. They walk every day, wake up every day, Lord. You're going to make me the head today. Amen. Awesome. Amen. He said, You'll be the lender and not the borrower. I don't want to be in debt. Right? He said, You're going to be the lender and not the borrower. Are you expecting that? Are you like, I just got to deal with my debt? I'm like, Lord, you said, I, See, I'm bold. You said, Amen. I'm reading it to him. You see what you said right here? Yeah. I'm just a little off like that. Amen. Church, God, God is calling us yes. Thank you, Jesus. to a supernatural expectation. There's power in expectation. You can be like those people that didn't expect anything from Jesus because all they did was see him in the natural. Or you could be like the centurion that says, you don't even have to come to my house. Just say it, Lord. Right. Just say it, Lord, and I know a miracle's coming. There's power and expectation, church, but, but you've got to engage your faith. You've got to believe and stand upon his word this morning. And you have got to walk in a power of expectation. Let's pray. Let's stand. Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, forgive us, Lord God, for our unbelief. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for our lack of faith. Forgive us for going through the motions and for being religious. Father God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus.